Hi, everybody. Welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for joining me. Welcome to your weekly Twin Flame Conversation. Um, this is going to be, this one's for twins in separation, uh, no contact. Um, it's funny because I've been doing this, doing the readings this way, like separating it between twins in separation and then twins in union or like contact, beneficial contact, whatever. Um, I've been doing, I think this is like my third week doing it now. And <laughs> I've been resonating with both sides. It's so weird. Um, and actually that has influenced me to think about maybe not doing it this way anymore and just doing messages for the twins in general, whether you are in union or whether you are not, you know what I mean? And wherever, because there are so many different, it's hard to pinpoint. Like that's why I put in the, um, the, the titles, you like for twins in union. Well, it's not necessarily they're in union, but if you're in communication, beneficial communication, whatever, like whatever, like, you know, I can't do five different videos. You know what I mean? Um, and so I'm kind of thinking about whether I should just start doing like a serious, just like a mirror reading for the twin flames. Um, because that's what I'm doing for the union. But <laughs> I literally just stopped and thought, well, wait a second, maybe I should just do that now. But my team guided me. They just said, no, do it this way for this week, and then we'll move on. Okay, so this is going to happen, guys. So what I'm going to do is, um, moving forward, I'm, and may, it might not. Let me just give me some time to think about it. But I feel like I want to just start doing a mirror reading for the Twin Flame Collective for just to bring forward the best messages for everyone. It doesn't matter where you are on your path, um, whether you're in union, not in union, not even on speaking terms with your twin. It doesn't matter. I just want to bring forward the best messages for those who need to hear them, okay? And yeah, so there's that. So this past week, it's been a rough one. It's been rough for the past two weeks, to be honest, more than that, actually. And it's been concerning me a little bit um, because I've been feeling a lot of anger, a lot of anger. Um, big old ego battle. Like the last last week, the the title of the um, the separation video was "Ego Battles Abound," and I mean we've been going through some serious ego death energy lately. Um, and I thought that was most of it was coming from my divine masculine, but then a very 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 dear friend of mine who has been such a rock for me lately, you know who you are, but <laughs> she mentioned to me she was like, "Well, Eric." Are you picking that up from him or are you just channeling? Are you picking up like the collective energy? And I was like, oh, there it is. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, we've been going through some serious ego death, guys. And it's been rough, um, but it's been a good thing. It's really been helping us. Um, we're really purging. We've been through a real serious purgy energy. We have a full moon tomorrow. Monday, the 30th of April. It is in Scorpio. I highly recommend that you guys utilize that to the best of your abilities if you can catch it. Um, it could really, because Scorpio is the sign of death and transformation. So if there's anything you're trying to let go of, y'all, now is the time. Okay. <laughs> um, what else? I got into an interesting conversation with this dear friend of mine about um, healthy boundaries while at the same time putting forward stipulations from on the divine feminine side um, in which there are only certain ways that your divine masculine can approach you. And I was saying to her that I really feel like that's a big blockage that the divine feminine is um, dealing with right now. It's like, well, no, you can only, you can only associate with me under these certain circumstances. Now I understand the need for healthy boundaries. But sometimes it gets too far. Like sometimes you're actually acting from a place of ego instead of a place of unconditional love, right? And attachment and needing to control. You are allowed to inform people of how you would like to be treated, but you can only go do so much with that. And at some point you have to like compromise and work with, with someone, you know what I mean? So I don't know if that's actually going to come up with the cards, but I really wanted to put that out there as just like plant that seed of thought in your heads, so in your mind, so that you can, you know, 
think about that and do with it what you will. Yeah? So, let's get into the cards, y'all. All right, so I'm going to start, again, I'm going to start with the Divine Feminine here, and we're going to do our the normal spread. Um, the four cards for the overall energy, plus the cards on the side, that, you know, you know. You know, and if you don't know, now you're about to know. Hey, all right. <laughs> so let's get into this, guys. Yeah. All right, spirit, please make me a clear channel for the Twin Flame Collective. For those Twin Flames who are in separation, no contact whatsoever, <laughs> those extreme situations, yes? Please bring forward the best messages for the twins at this time. Whoa, whoa, okay guys, here's what's gonna happen. Here's what's gonna happen. I am doing a mirror reading. So. I'm not doing it the same way I used to. Because to be quite honest, these mirror readings are freaking fantastic. Like I really, really love them. So we're going to put the old spread aside for this week and I'm going to give you guys a mirror reading. And I want you to let me know how this resonates with you. I want you to tell me which you prefer. Do you prefer the old spread? If you've never seen that before, just go back at least one week and watch the video um, and you'll see the video for the twins in separation because for the video for the twins in union, I did a mirror reading, okay? And if you are not familiar with my mirror readings, buckle your seat belts, honey. <laughs> so here's what here's what's what here's here's what's gonna happen. The deck on the left is going to symbolize the divine masculine. The deck on the right is going to symbolize the divine feminine. What happens in these mirror readings is I ask for a snapshot of the energies of the the, the two sides of the equation uh, in their current state. And I also ask for information as to how they are interacting with each other, okay? And then with this mirror reading, I finish it off with a relationship reading from the animal spirit deck. Oh, yes, we are vibing with this right now. This is fantastic. Let's do it, kids. I'm so excited. So let me start over. Spirit, please make me a clear channel for the Twin Flame Collective. For the twins that are in separation, no contact whatsoever, that kind of deal. Please give me a snap, give us a snapshot of the divine masculine represented by the deck on the left and the divine feminine represented on the deck on the right and how these energies of these individuals as an individual are interacting with each other. Please bring forward the best messages for this part of the collective at this time. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, give me just a few moments here while I shuffle. So this is going to be for the Divine Masculine. Divine Masculine. Okay, and one more shuffle. Excellent. Cut the deck. Oh, guys, 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 I am so excited for this right now. <laughs> this is great. Okay, there's that. The Divine Masculine's energy is set. Now, this is the Divine Feminine's energy. Also, so you know, this deck is... This is the um, part of the uh, book, Book of Shadows deck, okay? Um, and in the Book of Shadows Tarot, I just want to show this to you. And there are two decks. This is a two-part collection. As above, so below. And this deck is um, based off of paganism and witchcraft. Uh, so the practices of these things and their holidays and such. Um, and... The so the uh, as above takes the t traditional tarot and 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 shifts it around a little bit under the, with the with the uh, with pagan um, traditions and teachings and whatnot as the focus. Whereas the so below deck takes the traditional tarot deck and then and and gives you more of a depiction of the traditional tarot, but still with some some paganism and witchcraft elements to it. And I like to use this deck for the divine feminine because most of the depictions here are feminine in nature. Now, before I continue, I did get a flyer. Look at that. 
the page of pentacles. And this is a, this is a message from the divine masculine to the divine feminine. They are stepping up. They are studying. They are studious. And the, 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 uh, the page of pentacles, the, the, this gentleman here is, I'm seeing that in this guy looks like he's on his, uh, a laptop looks like he could be doing research. So this has to do with a lot of these ego battles that have been going on here. The divine masculine wants you to know divine feminine that they're learning their lessons. <laughs> and yes, they're kind of being forced into it right now. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about that. Okay. All right, Divine Feminine, one more shuffle for you, and then I'll cut the deck, and we'll get into it. Divine Feminine. Yeah, okay, we're well, going to give it one more. Two more. Yes, two more. All right. Divine Feminine. Okay, yeah. One more and then we're good. And as usual, I'm going to start with the Divine Feminine. Oh, guys, I am so excited for this. All right. Overall energy, Divine Feminine. We have the Six of Pentacles in reverse. So a lot of what you have been experiencing lately, Divine Feminine, is um, releasing this old paradigm of imbalance between give and giving and receiving. Okay, this is something we've been we we have been struggling with for some time now. But it's not even a struggle. It really hasn't been a struggle for a while. It's been more. Uh, we've been more in a place of just asserting ourselves and saying, "No, I'm not going to deal with that anymore." So what's really happening here? And some advice for you, divine feminine, is to utilize this full moon to really help you release. Um, codependency. Yes, codependency. Whatever, whatever last little bits of codependent behaviors you have or you've been made aware of, now is a time to really release it, okay? We've got the Knight of Wands, the Seven of Pentacles, and underneath all of that, we've got the Three of Pentacles, okay? So, in releasing this codependency, yes, the Six of Pentacles in reverse is, is speaking to codependency. You are in a place, Divine Feminine, in order to do this because you have, um, you have reached a new level of spiritual understanding about yourself and about the world around you. And you have been using this headspace that you've been in. You've been using this newfound, this leveling up, we will say, in a spiritual nature to take stock and look at the fruits of your labor and really get a deeper understanding of, how, of, of where you've been, how you got here, and how you've produced these fruits that may not be so appetizing, right? Excuse me. And then because of all of that, now you are really, well, actually, this is a driving force here. You have been really doing a lot of work, creative work even, on yourself. Really, really doing some work on yourself, Divine Feminine. And that is fantastic. Because ultimately, that is the goal of this journey. Whole, wholeness, self-healing, you know, coming back to oneness, within yourself, between you and source, God, creator, however you want to label it, yeah? All right, in your storyline, Divine Feminine, we have the Four of Cups, okay, with uh, the lovers. All right, so here's the deal, because when the Four of Cups came up, the first thing I thought of was some of you may be rejecting an offer from your Divine Masculine. Um, I know I was experiencing this energy a lot this past week um, because I kept felt I kept feeling him reach out to me uh, energetically and on a tele telepathic level, um, and I was very much like nope, 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 like like kind of embodying the the runner aspect if that's how you still understand this, um, and. It was interesting because I kept going back and forth between feeling all this anger and egoic rage and like all these low vibrational ego energies 
and thinking it was coming from my divine masculine and not realizing that it was coming from the collective and then having then feeling him reach out trying to connect with me and being really confused about it so if that's what you've been going through please understand that you may very well be connecting to the energies of the collective not just your your divine partner um but here what this is also saying for you divine feminine is you need to make a choice okay you have a choice in front of you now for some of you this may be um offers of love or affection coming in from others who are not your divine masculine and so you are in the process um, of kind of meditating kind of daydreaming um, going within not accepting these offers but questioning well should i even really do this like what this is not my divine masculine what what does this mean it's like okay yeah so but now if your heart i do want to say that if your heart is guiding you to take this offer then do it do it maybe this is a, maybe this is someone that you were meant to come into contact with and have some sort of relationship whether it be long term whether it be short term who knows only you know the um specifics of your own soul contract okay can nobody nobody can can nobody tell you what to do on your path no reader no guru no psychic no nothing can tell you what your path is other than you okay so follow your heart and do the damn thing <laughs> all right next divine feminine we have the knight of swords and no, i'm sorry the page of swords in reverse with the hanged man in reverse so this is releasing this is releasing an uh, a juvenile mindset frame of mind okay for for many of us that have been on this journey for so long divine feminine um We've been on this journey for so long because we kept seeing our divine masculine in ways that were unfavorable, mentally. We kept focusing on all the negative stuff, all the bullshit that happened. And for the most part, we were just kind of expecting it to continue, which will only perpetuate that by law of attraction, okay? But now we're coming out of that because we have put ourselves, for most of you, most of the divine feminine we have put ourselves in this hanged man state isolated ourselves cut ourselves off from our divine masculines um separated energetically as much as we could because we can never really be fully separate but um just pulling away from them energetically in order to get a different perspective in order to heal in order to like recollect ourselves and you know try and try and try and get some fresh air you know what I mean? So that we can see things differently. And we have been successful. Very successful. Now that does not mean, that really does not mean that things are just going to manifest just like that. For some of you, it might. But don't go into the situation thinking, okay, well, I've changed my point of view. Where is he? Uh, no. <laughs> just, I don't even want to get into it. Just don't. <laughs> okay? Just. Don't. Moving forward, we have the Ace of Swords in reverse with the Seven of Swords in reverse. So this is, again, this is releasing the old paradigm, okay? Healing from the, the, uh, the deception, okay? It's healing from even lying to yourself about the situation. Because you've known the whole time, Divine Feminine, you have known... That the, the, the depiction that your divine masculine has been placing before you for X amount of time that you've been in contact with them, you have known that that was not the true self. And yet, because it's what you experienced in your physical reality, it's what you perpetuated. Very much, I'll see it, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it type of thing. Ah, 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 nope. How about you believe it so you can see it? Right? Finally, for you, a divine feminine, we have the Ten of Wands in reverse. And this came up last week. The Ten of Wands came up, it was upright, but it came up last week in you saying 
to your divine masculine, I'm dropping these burdens now. Now, when I, when I, when I, when it came forward in that moment, it was more about, um, it was more about, you know, not holding this torch anymore and kind of separating or, uh, withdrawing energetically but here what i'm getting is it's a it's much bigger than that dropping all of the burdens that have come with this situation so meaning um the mental cycles that we have been in in perpetuating what we don't want okay that's the ten of wands is in reverse there oh shoot with the ten of swords and the ten of swords is upright so for some of you, Divine Feminine, that are in separation, you're kind of stuck in this area. You're in the Ten of Wands, I'm sorry, the Ten of, yes, the Ten of Swords state, meaning you don't want to have to feel like this mentally, you don't want to have to keep perpetuating this mental reality. But the Ten of Wands is reversed because you still haven't actually dropped the wands. And I just saw 2111 on the counter. If you don't want to be in this situation or in this position anymore, Divine Feminine, mentally, then spiritually, why are you still holding on to all of that? I'm going to leave that there because that was kind of a rhetorical question. <laughs> okay. Divine Masculine. Let's get into your energy here. Overall energy, we have the Hermit. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Why? Because there's a whole lot of infighting going on right now. Ego battles. You are required. You are required, Divine Masculine, at this point in the game. You are required to go within and do the work. And you are. For the most part, you are. But I know, I know it's not easy. It is not easy. I get it, y'all. I get it. Ooh, child. You got the king of cuts, honey. Hey, boo. <laughs> yeah, but see, this is the thing. Yes. I can't wait till you see the next card. This is the thing. Because you have been doing this work, Divine Masculine. You have been connecting with yourself. You have been healing your core wounds. You have been dropping your ego. You have been letting your ego die. And that is allowing your heart to open, your emotions to come forward. That is allowing you to become emotionally available, to step into your King of Cups reality. And I love to see this, y'all. And that. Hello. We've got the Nine of Swords in reverse. You're not afraid anymore. You've been through so much so far on this just on this journey. Even if you have only been on this path consciously for a few months, maybe even a few weeks, you have been through so much and you have grown so much that there's no way you can be afraid of it anymore. You know you'll survive. You know exactly who you are, don't you, Divine Masculine? Mm -hmm. I know that's right. And finally, underneath all of that, we have got the devil in reverse, y'all. Say bye-bye to that devil, because he is on his way out. He has been for a long time. That's true. I just heard that. But now we're actually starting to... Well, we, meaning Divine Masculine, you are actually starting to see how the devil is leaving your life now. Like it's actually starting to physically manifest. And that may not be in physical external situations, that's mostly on an internal level. You're seeing how that connection with the devil is not what it used to be for you. And so that makes it easier for you to let go, right? Moving forward, we have the Queen of Pentacles in reverse. So we're talking about karmics here with the moon, okay? Um, there are still some secrets around karmic situations for you guys somehow. Um... Oof. Oof. Oh God, that doesn't feel good. Hey, Divine Masculine, I'm not trying to get into your, your karmic situation, okay? I do not believe it's really any of my business as a Divine Feminine to know what's going on with your karmic situation because ultimately that's all on you, boo. Like those are your lessons that you need to learn. That is your situation that you need to handle. And many of you know, I have stopped doing karmic readings 
for that reason. Because I do not believe that is any of our business. And I lost quite a bit of followers or uh, subscribers because of that. And oh well, it is what it is. But I will say this, Divine Masculine, without getting too deep into that, there is some shady shit going on in your karmic relationship. Period. I mean, period. We've got the... It's not even like... I mean, you, we could be talking about karmic relationships with the Queen of Pentacles upright. But she ain't even upright. I mean, she ain't even acting right. Okay. On top of that, we've got the moon. So shit's being hidden from you anyway. Divine Masculine, please. Let this stuff go. I mean, you're in the process of it. And this is, and actually, you, and you know what? You know what, though? It's not as dire as I'm making it seem because you have the devil in reverse. So you are releasing this devil energy. But what this is saying right now, Divine Masculine, is that you are starting to understand. You're starting to see. Oh. No, the, I'm, I'm being deceived here. Like, like, not even just like, on a serious level, I'm being deceived here. Okay, so just like the Divine Feminine is working on releasing um, certain thought patterns, certain expectations is the word. So you now, because you're getting the physical confirmation. Because you, as a masculine energy, you need more tangible evidence of things, or you have needed more tangible evidence of things in the past. But now that you have um, you have connected with your emotions and your intuition, the intuition of the moon that the red, that is represented by the moon is saying to you, beep beep beep, red flag, red flag, red flag, and you're at a point now where you have come to trust your intuition enough where you can say to yourself. Ooh, red flag. Okay, let me pull back. I don't even need to know what it is. I just trust you. Let me just pull back. Excellent, Divine Masculine. That is very good. Next, we have the Seven of Wands. Standing up. I love that. With, ooh, the Knight of Cups. But the Knight of Cups is reversed. So, again, we're still talking about, wow, we're still talking about karmics here. So you're standing up for yourself and not wanting to express this love anymore, not wanting to be in this relationship anymore. This does not have to be a knockdown, drag up fight, drag out fight. But what you're going through right now, Divine Masculine, is standing up for who you truly are and where your true heart lies. Where you, where you get the most authentic fulfillment. And we know who that comes from, right? <laughs> but it's not just about the Divine Feminine. It's about in all areas of your life. So you're standing up for yourself in the sense that you're, you're going after the things that you truly want to go after, not what everyone else tells you to go after. You're standing up for yourself in the sense that you really don't need to explain. You don't got. You don't gotta explain shit to nobody. You don't gotta give anybody an excuse for why you're not happy. I'm not happy. Get the fuck over it and let me go. Right? I don't need to explain anything to you. <laughs> and yeah, that is definitely you standing up for yourself, putting your foot down, saying enough is enough. Ooh, chow. <laughs> Moving forward, we have the Nine of Wands. Perseverance. Just keep swimming with the Hanged Man. Look at that. Mirror. Because the Divine Feminine got the Hanged Man too. Now, um, for you Divine Fe Masculine, you're still in a bit of a Hanged Man state. This is self-imposed, just like it was for the Divine Feminine. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I was I was uh, channeling a little bit. Uh, I was trying to make sure I got this message from, from the Divine Feminine correct. But I did. Because the Divine Feminine is actively coming out of a hanged man state. Divine Masculine, you're kind of going into one right now. But that has to do with these ego battles that you've been dealing with. You know, this <laughs> extreme ego death that you've been dealing with. You know, frankly, that we've all been dealing with, really. So this hanged man is also a bit of a restful period, right? Similar to, like, the Four of Swords. Maybe that'll come up in the last two cards. I don't know. But we'll see. Um, 
Yeah. But you're being asked to persevere. And this is why, and yeah, this is why I'm picking up some Four of Swords energy because you're taking a step back, isolating yourself a little bit, suspending yourself a little bit so that you can get a, deep, a different perspective before you step back into the battle. So the Nine of Wands is saying to me that, you know, keep your defenses up. You're, you're going to have to enter the battle again, but use this time wisely to really get a good look at everything before you enter back into the situation. Finally, for you, Divine Masculine, we have the Page of Cups in reverse, or in this deck, it is the Princess of Cups with mm, Temperance in reverse. So we're back on, we're back to the Karmics here. But what I want to talk about with the Karmics in this situation is um, you are learning. You are learning how out of alignment you were when you came in, when you got into this um, relationship. Now, this doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. This could be friends. This could be family. You know, this could be this could be a job. This could be anything of a karmic nature that is blocking you from reaching root union with your twin. Okay, and even if it's your family, I'm not saying you were out of balance when you you know when you were born. What I'm well, you could no no you could have been, but uh, that doesn't feel that doesn't feel so right to me. What I am saying here is you're seeing how out of balance the situation as a whole was. There it is. So, um, and this is, this is being facilitated because you yourself are working on balancing your own energies, right? So as you balance yourself out, you become aware of the imbalances surrounding you. And when it comes to like the princess or in this deck, it's called the princess, but it's act but universally, it's the page of cups. Um, you know, you're kind of coming out of this juvenile, um, not so mature view of love, of relationships, of emotional reality. You're really coming to terms with how a lot about this karmic relationship, whatever that is for you is immature and imbalanced. And it is being facilitated by you bringing yourself into greater personal balance. Yeah? Okay. This was really good. Like there are, this was a lot of positive messages here. This is fantastic. So let me get into the um, relationship reading now. And if you're not familiar with this, get ready. Because I love this. I love this deck, guys. Okay. Let me just... Ooh. Right, let me just shuffle this up a little bit. Okay. All right, Spirit. So please give us the best messages for twin flames in separation right now and no contact um in relation to this reading from the animal deck yeah so the first card we get is going to symbolize the uh, divine masculine top we have earthworm the next card is going to symbolize the divine feminine crocodile Ooh. The next card is going to symbolize the shadow dynamic. Phoenix, hello. And finally, no, not that. This one. We have black egg. Wait, oh shoot. Where did, there it is. Okay. This is good, this is good guys, this is good. Ooh. It's just a second here. All right, so divine masculine. This is you right now, Earthworm. These cards are so beautiful, guys. And honestly, they just feel so good in my hands. It's fantastic. <laughs> Earthworm, here we go. Shy, hesitant, reluctant to share inner vision. 
We have all felt the woes of the earthworm at some point along the way. The earthworm indicates a newbie or novice working to establish confidence in a new field. Others around you may seem wise and experienced, but it's important to remember that they once felt earthworm energy too. This card is a reminder not to be intimidated or lose hope. Mastery takes time and you're on the right track. Besides, rumor has it a beginner's mind offers the most valuable insights. <laughs> when in balance, earthworm is earnest, intelligent, and valuable. When out of balance, earthworm is self-conscious and apprehensive. To bring up, to bring into balance, speak up, risk embarrassment. And that's exactly what you're doing right now, Divine Masculine. Look, don't believe me? Here's the proof. Seven of Wands and the Knight of Cups reversed. You ain't doing this shit no more. You are standing up for yourself. And you absolutely probably do feel like a, a beginner, a novice right now. Why? Because you've stepped into a new level. A new level of reality, of self-respect, of authenticity. And sure, you may make mistakes here or there. You may say the wrong thing here or there. You may come across wrong. Whatever. Who the fuck cares? Make your mistakes, learn your lessons, and keep moving. Okay. <laughs> All right, Divine Feminine. Crocodile. <clears throat> Where is she at? No. Nope. Sorry, guys. It does take me a little bit of time sometimes to find these cards in the book. They're organized by element, but then they're not really... <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. Hold on a second. I'll find it. I promise. I promise. I promise. Where are you? There you are. Crocodile. Resting. Submerging. Collecting energy. Cooling off. The crocodile reminds us to step back from the external world and turn inward. Now is not the time for decisions, actions, or discussion. The crocodile's mantra is wait. This doesn't mean lying around hoping life's changes will disappear. I'm sorry, this, do this doesn't mean, <laughs> okay, this doesn't mean lying around hoping for life's challenges to disappear. The crocodile is much smarter than that. It means intentionally withdrawing, gathering our awareness, observing, and building energy. Fill up the vital reserves for your next move, uh, for your next move, oh, I'm sorry, fill up the vital reserves so your next move comes from a place of wisdom and power. When in balance, crocodile is wise patient, a silent powerhouse. When out of balance, crocodile feels stuck and lashes out. To bring into balance, rest. Makarasana pose. Makarasana pose. I don't know what that is, but if you know what that is, if it resonates with you, go for it. But yeah. <clears throat> and it's so funny because, um, you know, I had, we had the hanged man here in reverse and the knight of wands, of swords in reverse, saying that you're coming out of, um, uh, a hanged man isolated state, but you can, you can, you can emerge from the hanged man and still be silent, reserved, restful. I know that for some time, I, like for a, a, about a week now, I just removed my, I just did not, I was not on social media and I'm usually one to be on social media a lot. And I have been posting mess like music on my Facebook page in relation to what I'm feeling going through this journey. And I stopped for about a week. And I finally did it again today, but that's because I had been feeling the urge to. But see, that word urge was enough for me to enough for me to say no. But then today it got to a point where it was like, okay, no, I really feel like I can make a move, a move right now. So I did. I mean, I didn't expect any sort of result to come out of it, at least right away or whatever. I wasn't looking for a response. But I shared another song that was really resonating with me. And it um, it was coming from a place of authenticity and love and wanting to speak. And I felt like I had taken sufficient time to make the decision to make sure I was really doing it from a place of authenticity and love and not say ego, not trying to perpetuate the same paradigm, right? Now, I mean, I took that one step. I have one more step that I, that's part of, you know, it's a two part step, but that's it for now. 
I'm not continuing to plan more steps. I'm like, okay, no, I got this step. I'm good. I can do that. And then we can move forward and see what comes up moving forward. Whereas in the past, I would plan these steps ahead of time and follow through with them. But I'm not, no, I don't need to do that right now. I know I, I know I wanted to share this one thing. So good, I'm doing that. And that's all I need for the moment. I will remain silent. I will remain reserved and I will rest and I will keep my eyes open and I will look for the next opportunity. And that's what Crocodile is saying right now, Divine Feminine. That is where you need to be right now in order to really be as effective in your reality as possible, okay? The shadow dynamic is Phoenix. Look at that gorgeous card. Phoenix. Freedom from suffering and past karma. Reincarnation. The phoenix represents the transformation of our past. It doesn't mean running from it, denying it, or burning bridges with rage. The phoenix employs an advanced technique described in yoga as the burning of impurities through practice and dedication, tapas. The essence of the phoenix with us... I'm, I'm sorry. The essence of the phoenix is with us when we realize we have been suffering too long and something must change. We take a stand and decide to live consciously instead of being driven by the unconscious mind and its long list of fears and aversions. At that very moment, the spark of the phoenix is lit, and the great bird helps us burn through our baggage. We no longer run from who we are, what has, what has happened to us, or what we have done. The stuckness and dead weight fall into the ashes, and a lightness and clarity emerge. As the stagnancy continues to molder, the phoenix lifts our spirits up and up and we begin to recognize ourselves again. We may catch a glimmer in our eye that wasn't there before. Look closely. It's a sign the fire of transformation is upon your wings. The phoenix and the first chakra. The ancient yogis believed that our heaviest karmas reside in the first chakra. This earthen center is also called muldahara or our root. The essence of the phoenix begins here, and as the engage, and as the engagement entanglement, excuse me, and as the entanglement of karmas is slowly burned, it rises from the ash towards the navel center. Again and again, it makes this journey from first to third chakra, purifying our essence, freeing us from the past. Enough said. <laughs> and notice, guys. Well, I want you to notice that. Wow. I mean, these cards are so, these cards are such the truth. I mean, the divine masculine got earth, uh, uh, an, element, uh, uh, an animal from the earth element. The divine feminine got an animal from the water element. Emotion, tangible, physical reality. Hello, are you getting it? <laughs> and then for the, the combined energies, as in the shadow dynamic and the illuminated dynamic, we have two spiritual cards, two cards from the spirit um, section, element, we'll call it. So the shadow dynamic is Phoenix. The illuminated dynamic is Black Egg. Black Egg. Speaking from an authentic voice, the truth. The Black Egg contains one of life's essential treasures, the truth. Inside of it resides no confusion, excuses, small talk, noise, or lies, not even white ones. This living and breathing vessel harbors only that which rings true. When this essence is in balance, is, when this essence is in balance, we speak slowly and clearly. We are drawn to activities like writing, reading, teaching, singing, or perhaps public speaking. Sounds draw us in. Books draw us in. The concept of truth itself draws us in. We start asking questions like, what do I know to be true about myself? And what is true about the world? When the energy of the black egg is not yet accessed, we speak from an unsure place. We say things others want to hear, gossip, or repeat stories to justify our subpar behavior. We might even try to convince ourselves that we have no inner truth at all. The energy of the black egg hovers and waits for us to reconnect. It is available at every moment in every situation. It is the epicenter of truth, the birthplace of our voice. 
the black egg, and the fifth chakra. The subtle es essence of this card resides at a base at the base of the throat, at the Vish um, Vishuddha chakra. The ancient sages saw this center as the hub that governs our speech and expression. Vishuddha translates as especially pure. The balance of this center is important for all of us, but is especially essential for writers, editors, musicians, and teachers. I kept pausing because I felt like I said the black egg and the heart chakra, which isn't true. The heart chakra is the fourth chakra. It was the black egg and the fifth chakra, okay? Anyway, there it is, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I really enjoyed doing this for us. This is really great. This gave us a lot of really good information. Okay? So, there it is, guys. Oh, let me adjust this. Ah, what's up, guys? So, much love to you all. And I hope you have a great week. And I look forward to our next conversation next week. Yeah? Take care, guys. Much love. Bye.